guys have no idea how long it took me to rank these perfumes. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ursel and today I wanted to show you my winter perfume tray. So a lot of these perfumes are vegan and cruelty free. Uh, some of them unfortunately is not, but I'm still working towards the goal of having my entire um, makeup and perfume collection cruelty free. So before I begin, I want to say I have always loved a good perfume. Um, it's always been an interest of mine, but I've never really took a deep dive and tried to really do some research and figure out what is, what kind of notes I like and, and all that. I, I kind of got really interested uh, about two years ago and I think it all started with me trying to figure or trying to find dupes of my some of my most favorite perfumes um, that weren't cruelty free and it just started I just started researching from there and I kind of dived into the whole whole perfume space of YouTube and reading all kinds of reviews and you name it um, and I've even though I've loved perfumes, I ne I've never been really good at kind of uh, s smelling the exact notes and what about the perfumes I liked, what perfumes I disliked and why and all that. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting to know myself more and more when it comes to preferences. And one of the things that I actually did um, when I first started this journey, perfume journey, was to read about all of my current perfumes that I had in my collection and also the ones that I have decluttered and I noted all of the notes that were in the different perfumes um, every single note of my favorite perfumes and so the ones that were repeating themselves I had a yellow mark on the ones that were per, uh, repeating themselves uh, several times. I have had like an orange mark and then the ones that were again and again showing up, I had a purple mark on. So it was just interesting for me to see what sort of notes I tend to go for and that were um, showing up over and over again. And so then after that, I wrote the typical top notes that I tend to like and then heart notes and base notes and from that again this is just fun for me to do uh, I don't know even if it's a tip uh, when you're first starting out with perfumes but I do feel like it has become easier for me to sort of pinpoint when I'm searching for new perfumes and figure out okay so it has the vanilla and the base mixed with the woody scent. I, I can figure out a little bit better now, still completely amateur. Just let's get that straight. Um, but it's just a little bit easier for me to find new perfumes that I like. And especially because I live far, far away from any perfume stores, a lot of the times I have to blind buy my perfumes and I don't want to do that too many times and dislike the perfumes I buy. So, and it's not the same return policy here in Norway that it is like, for instance, in the United States, you're not, you can't just return them without any problems, <laughs> if you know what I mean. The same goes with um, skincare and makeup and anyways, I, from the little list that I made of top notes, heart notes, and base notes, I created a little bit of a, like a spring perfume, summer perfume, fall perfume, and winter perfume selection. What kind of top no notes would I, for instance, like in a winter perfume, and what base notes would go well in a fall perfume. And then once I did that, I have, there's several, there's, several apps and um, websites that you can go into and just type in the notes that you prefer and they'll come up with a selection of 
perfumes for you to try out and so I did that. So I also have suggestions and they ended up being some of the perfumes that I've already tried and have in my collection but also new perfumes that I am kind of curious about. And then there's also perfumes that I know for like for instance the Katy Perry Purr perfume came up because I have this like mixture of um, notes in my summer perfumes and then the thing is with this one I've already owned it I do like it and I the reason why I purchased it in the first place is that it does contain pretty much the same notes as my all-time favorite perfume which I'm going to talk about later on in this video but it ended up not being my um, a go-to good perfume for me at all and I ended up um, decluttering it actually so that kind of taught me that you can't just blind combine all your favorite notes and think it's going to be your favorite perfume because it's so it has so much to do like it's a whole chemistry art kind of thing it, perfumes is so complex and I kind of learned that through this sort of research it all has to do with how it's blended and if it's the base or if it's in the heart or if it's in the notes in the if sorry in the top notes um what it's combined with but it's still really interesting for me to learn about this and i'm still learning so much and yeah i it's it has become such a passion of mine and now i'm gonna stop rambling and just get on with the 12 perfumes that i've chosen for this winter season um, two of the perfumes are like my year-round perfumes my top favorite perfumes they're they basically go with everything all seasons every day and they will probably be my forever favorites I just can't think of anything I want to change about them one is cruelty free one is not and I haven't made an attempt to rank these perfumes I don't know if I did all that well I might even change my opinion about the whole ranking part but I'll let you know what I feel about these perfumes and why I like or doesn't really like them all that much so we're gonna get started with the bottom ranked perfume in this uh, little collection of mine and that is the Juliet has a gun um, perfume so it basically just says four M's with a dot 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 this came in a discovery set and I'm really glad I got to try it but yeah it's definitely my least favorite it's just not my cup of tea I've seen people comparing it to the Dior hypnotic perfume hypnotic poison I think it's called just a fun fact I don't know if that's true I haven't even I don't think I've ever smelled that perfume but if you like that one, I guess maybe you like this one. It's just very musky. I think it has some raspberry in the opening, but I can't really smell that. I smell more of the patchouli note, which is a, the like the number one note I dislike in a perfume. Although I have learned that there are a few, like the way it's blended has so much to say with patchouli for me. And there is a couple perfumes that I do absolutely love, even though it contains patchouli. But it's very rare that I like perfumes with patchouli. Most times I think it's way too strong, way too old lady-like. Just not for me. And this, for, for me, I think it is the patchouli that kind of destroys this perfume for me. I think if you love patchouli, maybe this is something for you. But it's... um. It's a little bit sweet, which is good. I don't absolutely hate this. Initially, when I first smelled it, you have the jasmine and tuberose. Tuberose is also something like all of these floral names. I also thought that, you know, floral is definitely not my thing. It's not something I go for in perfumes. I only like the gourmand, vanilla, warm, cozy perfumes. And I've learned through this process that I do actually have some floral perfumes in my collection that I really, really like. And my number one 
all-time favorite perfume is mainly floral and it's just yeah very interesting and eye-opening to me but this is like a sweet floral and like I said I have learned to s sort of smell that two rose um, which I find to be interesting um, and we have the jasmine and I guess I like it a little bit more as it settles because more of a vanilla comes through but yeah it's just not a favorite of mine and also it doesn't have a good longevity it goes away pretty fast although it is pretty strong and heavy and it definitely is more suitable for winter in my eyes but yeah I don't know what more to say about this it's just not oh god through this perfume journey I have really become more open to perfume notes and stuff that I wouldn't typically go for and I just find it's it's you your nose kind of changes as you learn more about these notes and I I really was open for this perfume and I, I it definitely failed me so this is definitely at the bottom and I know for a fact it's not gonna be something I purchase a bigger bottle of for sure Next we have the Skylar Vanilla Sky. This is also from a discovery set. I just ranked this this low because it's probably my least favorite vanilla perfume. And I'm like, I love most vanillas. It's just my absolute favorite note in a perfume. But this is just, um, it's not quite doing it for me. It still sm smells really good. It's, it's warm and thick, caramely, sugary, strong scent. It's almost, I feel like it's like a stronger version of the Billie Eilish, Eilish perfume. I find them to be very similar, but this is just a little bit too heavy for me. There's supposed to be citrus and coffee in this. I can't really smell that. I just, it's fine. I don't mind using it, it's just not a favorite. Another one from the Discovery set, the Skylar Isle Escape. This is a fresh, salty, watery kind of scent. Uh, this actually makes the Vanilla Sky smells a lot better. Like the mixture of those two, I really, really enjoy. This on its own, it's good. I like it more than, than the Vanilla Sky, but it's probably not gonna be a um, purchase or a repurchase of mine. It's powdery in a way. Um, I can't really smell that cardamom that they're talking about. I, I do smell the bergamot. It's very prominent. It's a good everyday perfume. Uh, lasts for about four hours, not very long. And even though I put thin, this in the winter season, I think it works well year round, to be honest. Now it's starting to get a little bit more difficult because all of the other perfumes mentioned in this video are favorites of mine. Like I really, really like them all. But the next perfume I want to talk about is the Ariana Grande Mud Vanilla. It was difficult, but I decided to put it in, in the ninth place. It's, it's a really, really good vanilla scent. I really, really like it. It is similar to Cloud, but it's a little bit more of a simple perfume or a simple, yeah, it's a little bit more simple. And because it's so simple, I think it's a great mixer. I really like to combine this with my clean um, skin perfume. Those are really good combination, combinations. <laughs> um, great everyday perfume, but I do prefer during the winter months. It's a creamy fresh light perfume not as fresh I mean not as light as cloud it has a fruity opening then it turns more creamy and then at the base it has more of a nutty scent with the vanilla and coconut and yeah what else do I want to say about this it's just it's a really good perfume I don't like the bottle 
Um, I don't know if I would repurchase this. I think I would probably repurchase the Cloud Perfume over this. I find them to be so similar that I don't feel like I absolutely have to have both of them in my collection. Next we have, and the, the, the two next ones that I'm going to talk about, they're so, I, it's so hard to place them in the ranking process because I find them to be, or to do kind of the same thing for me, but I've chosen the YSL Black Opium. This is just a little like travel size of this perfume. I actually used to own sort of a brush on perfume of this kind um, before this one and then I got this one in a little advent calendar so all the other perfumes mentioned so far is cruelty free this one is not and I've actually bought a dupe for this from Eden perfumes but I'm gonna be honest I don't find them to be identical it is still a good one the one from Eden, but it's just not as good as this one. Maybe it's because it smells more alcoholy, uh, the dupe one, than this one. I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about this one. This is such a beautiful, warm, strong, sexy, kind of going out date night kind of perfume, at least for me. This is, I think it's like a head turner for sure. It's very complex. It has the licorice, coffee, vanilla, patchouli. This is one of the perfumes that I actually like, that patchouli. And I don't know how they blend it for me to actually like it, but they have managed to do that. It has some almonds, um, florals. There's just a lot combined here in this perfume. And I really, really, really like it. It's just a little bit more, you know, for nighttime for going out on a date or maybe a, a, a party. It has good projection, lasts for about six hours maybe. Just a beautiful, spicy, good perfume that I really, really enjoy. I feel like this next one, the Carolina Herrera Good Girl perfume, it's just a little, uh, this, like the same kind of perfume as the Black Opian opium just not so much in your face it's still a very good strong feminine sexy perfume and look at the bottle it's so beautiful this is just a, like a travel size as well I think when you buy the full size version you can push the little like the skull part right here um, or the heel and you can spray the perfume like that. For me, you have to take it off like this, but it's fine. <laughs> it's sweet, creamy, fresh, light, powdery. It, well, it's, it's like light, but in a strong way. <laughs> a little bit spicy, like it has floral fruity notes. I can smell the tonka bean, but I find it hard to like pinpoint what exactly it is that I'm smelling, so still an amateur like I said so I can't I'm not doing great with this perfume all I know is that I really really like this and I think this is not cruelty free either I think I'm gonna try the dupe version from Eden because I haven't tried that yet once I'm done with this one because I really I think I want to have this or continue to have this in my collection a really nice perfume all right, this next perfume, I think, I believe this is my latest purchase. I got this right before Christmas, and that was very convenient because I, I feel like this is a very Christmassy scent. This is the Rituals um, Awe the Orient. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but yeah, I have another perfume from Rituals. I really enjoy their perfumes. That one's call, called something Dior, Au Dior, Sol Dior. Anyways, this is amazing. This is so good. This has very quickly become one of my personal favorites. Uh, the thing is that my partner does not like this one. 
neither neither did my dad it's a very very strong perfume uh, but it is so uh, unique very unique to me or at least unique to my collection and so whenever I'm home alone I spray a little bit of this one on and it just hugs me that's the best description it just warm and really really spicy a very very much a, an oriental scent great for those dark wintry cold nights I think because it has those spices I feel like it's very nice for Christmas it has it has a very sharp peppery note which I've learned to absolutely love um, in the opening and then it turns more um, it gives me more of that oriental exotic um, incense kind of scent and in the base it's more of a woody vanilla benzoin amber kind of scent <laughs> if I would have closed my eyes and just smell this and kind of guessed what house what kind of house um, this were from I would have guessed it was a Tom Ford perfume for sure I feel like it's in the family of all of the Tom Ford perfumes I've ever smelled it's just very extremely rich and heavy but for me like normally I don't like heavy scents I feel like um, black opium is really just on the limit of what I like and for some reason this is more heavy than the black opium and I still enjoy it it's just so special and I it, it's like I crave this I really crave this it's out of this world I really wish that the rest of my family liked this so I could just drench myself in this but I think for a lot of people this can be way too much overwhelming headachey kind of scent and uh, even when I bought this um, I could tell that the one who, <laughs> who the, the seller was not a fan of this I was like oh my gosh this is something this is amazing and he was like yeah it's it's something <laughs> so uh, I can tell you I this is not a blind buy kind of perfume you have to smell this and I think it's sort of either you love it or you hate it kind of perfume but for me I absolutely love it and this is also cruelty free so that's amazing and it's also affordable rituals is pretty affordable in my opinion it has a great longevity like I would say eight to ten hours if I were to categorize this perfume I would say it's a spicy gourmand yeah really really enjoy this one next I decided to put the Ariana Grande clout perfume you can see that I've used a lot of this this but I will say um, this has good longevity but it's so it's such a light perfume a very cloud airy creamy perfume and for that reason it's even though it has a good longevity I don't feel like it, it, I need for it to be a little bit more stronger so I almost use this as a body spray I, this is like the one perfume I do several sprays with normally I would do two sprays when when I put, put on a, a perfume but with this one I I feel like I need some more I think Ariana Grande is one of the best celebrities to do perfume I mean I really love the uh, Britney Spears fantasy that is one of my favorites I had that years and years ago but current celebrities she's doing a great job I think um, it's it's very similar like I said to what vanilla it's similar to the Baccarat Rouge 540 but I I still I, I, I don't think they're dupes but at the same time who am I to say because I only have a dupe of the Baccarat Rouge 540 as well so I've never smelled the actual original so don't don't listen to me but <laughs> I 
find that the dupe I have and this one are not um, dupes at all or they're not even they're in the, in the same like family I feel like this could be like the little sister of Baccarat Rouge but they're not similar enough to be called dupes from the ex small experience that I've got but like I said it has that creamy light fresh note um, it also has the coconut and vanilla um, it's pretty simple but still way more complex than the matte vanilla in my eyes it has sort of a plastic or like a synthetic scent to it or vibe to it I don't know I don't know how to describe it it's not like in a bad way but I, I definitely can tell that it has sort of this synthetic smell to it um, but yeah I really like this and I I think I would repurchase this one actually it's it's a really good one and it's good for all ages too because it just it's it blends so well in with everything blends in with your skin really well um, yeah a really good one this is also definitely either you love it or hate it perfume as I smell it I it's almost like I want to put it on top because man this is good I really enjoy this it's the Ellis Brooklyn B I just got a little travel size I would like to purchase the full size next time definitely gonna repurchase this one um, I've seen people compare it to like a cough cough um, medicine because it has like a honey or like cough drops I think it's called uh, it has that a lot of honey in it it's like a very strong honey it's very prominent but for me I love honey like Marc Jacobs honey I used to have that one one of my favorites really really enjoy that one this like that's very honey ish but this is even more honey but it smells more of a true honey, like a rich, natural honey. And it sort of has a pepperminty background, but it also has a warm musk vanilla scent to it. It's, it's so good. So, so good. And you have the cinnamon as well. It's like a, it, it is sort of a spicy gourmand as well. It reminds me of a, a spicy drink or something very very good for the holidays as well just a lovely winter perfume at first when I got it because of the name B I started using it during the springtime and even though I like it for spring as well I found that wearing it in the winter time really brought out all of the unique special beautiful notes that I loved about it for me even though it is sweet it's not too sweet i feel like it's a just a beautiful unique very cozy and yeah love 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 this one will absolutely repurchase and ellis brooklyn is cruelty free as well oh and ariana grande is cruelty free if i didn't say next we have a little travel size from eden this i wanted to try it as a travel travel size first because i wasn't sure about this i had never smelled it in store i just i think it was a merlina seal that got me into this perfume first um because she spoke so warmly about this it's one of her favorite vanilla perfumes and it is the uh, dupe for tom ford tobacco vanilla as you can see I really like this perfume I'm just trying to save the last little bits it's one of my partner's favorite perfumes as well he really likes this on me and this is I feel like this is I hear people describe this as not being super super sweet I find it to be like sugary sweet but in a the best possible way it's a very uh, grown-up kind of sweet I, I don't feel like it's very versatile as a perfume. I don't feel like you can use it as an everyday go-to perfume. It's just more only as a sexy kind of perfume for a date night or something. It's so good. I believe this could be a really good perfume on men as well. I think it's unisex and 
yeah, maybe it's more suitable for men when I think about it in a way. It starts out being really, really um, rich and spicy and it goes more into a creamy base. Very rich and elegant and just beautiful. It has about six hours of wear. Um, now that I've showed you, I'm gonna stop saving this and actually use this up. I, I believe that I will be able to use this up fairly quickly. Um, and I'm definitely gonna repurchase probably, probably the bigger size. I'm not sure. I'm trying to not purchase as many perfumes as I've done the past two years, but at the same time, I'm not being too restrictive because this has become like my new passion and I'm being really restrictive with my makeup purchases these days. So perfume is like what my one um, sort of guilty pleasure, I would call it. So I, I, I'm, I'm, deba I'm debating on whether or not I should buy another one of these small ones or a bigger size. If you haven't heard of Eden, and maybe you're a little bit curious trying to softly go over to being more vegan and cruelty free. This is an amazing vegan and cruelty free brand that's based in the UK. And you basically just type in any of your favorite perfumes and they will come up with a dupe for you. They have, they specializes on dupes. Uh, I think that's mainly what they do. And they have such a huge range of perfumes. I still have yet to find, to not find a dupe for my non-cruelty-free favorite perfumes. And so, yeah, I really recommend it. Not sponsored, by the way, at all, <laughs> but I really have come to love this Eden brand. So you can buy three of these in like a little, discovery set just a great way to try them out so i recommend you doing that and then lastly we have the two perfumes that are on the top they are really an all year round kind of perfumes a go-to every day love them for any occasion really first up is the eden again eden um 504 this is the dupe for the Baccarat Rouge 540. As you can see, and this is also one that I'm trying to save. There's just a little bit left in there. This is amazing. It's divine. If you haven't smelled this, oh my gosh. And let me remind you that I have not ever smelled the original Baccarat Rouge 540. I only bought this because of the amazingly good reviews on this dupe and I didn't read any review saying that this was not like the exact that, that it didn't smell exactly like um, the original so I I feel convinced that this is similar enough and by now I don't really care because I love this one so much so I'm not really interested in the original and this is just way more affordable. Definitely gonna repurchase this bottle, uh, but let me get to the notes. It's hard to really describe this perfume. I, this is one of the few that I just, I can't, this one and my number one, hard to like pinpoint what is it exactly that I absolutely love, but it is sort of a caramelized, amber vanilla kind of perfume it has some but woody notes as well and i love it at the top i love it at the heart in the middle and as it settles settles down and i often i have discovered that throughout this journey that sometimes i absolutely love the top and then i get really disappointed as it settles down or dries down um, sometimes I just wish that the middle note would last a little bit longer because that's my favorite part. Like for instance, the, I believe it's the Kayali Yum Pistachio that I just love the middle so, so much. I think so. And with this one and my top favorite, 
I just love all those little layers. So, oh, beautiful, beautiful perfume. Really, really love this and will definitely repurchase this one. Also pretty long lasting as well. Then finally, this is like an hour long video. I don't know how to edit this down, but finally we're at number one. This is, if you've watched, I have um, a separate video I did years and years ago reviewing this perfume only. It is the Ceruti 1881 Pour Femme perfume. I need a moment for this. This, this is my all-time favorite go-to everyday, nighttime, daytime, you name it. Super, 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 super long-lasting. Like I've never tried a perfume this long-lasting. It is strong and it is surprising to me that this is really a, a woody floral scent. So again, as I was discovering my preferences, this turns out to be, I can't remember the notes right now and I can't really describe what I'm actually smelling, but I just, I can just tell that this smells so good. And the, the really nice thing about this is that I started using this when I was like 15, 16 or something, and I'm close to 40 years old now, and it's still like my favorite. And throughout those years, you know, I've made memories around this. I've worn this during some of my favorite moments or best times in life. And it just reminds me of all those moments and also about my sister and my mom because they both really enjoy this perfume as well. Uh, now I will say that this is the, you know, this is the actual bottle. I'm going to purchase um, an Eden dupe for this as well. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. This is not cruelty free so I'm really bummed about that because it's difficult to let this one go. Um, I'm never gonna throw out this bottle. I've had several of these bottles. Um, yeah, it, it just means so much to me. I've gotten so many compliments um, wearing this perfume, both from guys and girls. So I think, I mean, this is very unique. So I'm not saying that every single person around would absolutely love this perfume. I don't know what it is about this. It's, it's just, it has always made my day a little bit better. And even though I, I don't grab for it as often anymore, I, sometimes I just go in my cupboard and just smell it. And it just brings back all the good, good times and memories. I am kind of saving it. It is really hard to find. It's not a very popular perfume these days. People do not talk about this perfume. I've only seen like one or two people or videos about this ever. Uh, but this is just like a hidden gem. Guys, if you haven't smelled this yet, just, just do it. I think, I, I think you're gonna like it. <laughs> so yeah, those were all the perfumes that I'm currently using this winter. I'm kind of into doing maybe more perfume videos throughout the year. I might do like a spring perfume tray and a summer perfume tray and a fall perfume tray. I might do that just because I thought this was really fun and maybe you like it as well. That would be a bonus. <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you haven't fallen asleep just yet. If you have any questions about any of these perfumes, let me know in the comments. Let me know what are your favorite um, winter perfumes. I would love to know because because I'm always up for trying new perfumes. Um, so yeah, let me know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. It means a lot, really. It does. So I hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye!